The 7-5 Ravens went into Arrowhead Stadium to face off with the 10-2 Chiefs and had playoff implications in tow. The Ravens led the league in fewest points allowed with 214 coming into this game, and their goal was to limit the high-flying Chiefs offense led by sophomore standout Patrick Mahomes. Hello everyone, my name is Maximus, and in this week's episode of Final Five, we take a deep dive into the battle between the league's highest scoring offense and stingiest defense. Let's get into it. With 5 minutes and 22 seconds left in the fourth quarter, the Chiefs punted to return man Cyrus Jones. After a 10-yard return, two penalties were called, forcing Kansas City to re-kick. With the second kick, Cyrus Jones bolted to the sidelines, turned it upfield, broke a few tackles, followed his blocks, and made his way to the 14-yard line. With that stellar return, he set up the Ravens for success by starting their possession off in the red zone. On 1st and 10 from the 14, Lamar Jackson gives the ball to Gus Edwards out of the pistol formation for a gain of 3 yards. With the same look on 2nd down, Jackson keeps the ball and bumps it outside. DB Steven Nelson makes a good open field tackle and limits the gain to 2. Taking a second look at John Brown, who is at the top of your screen, he runs a casual route and doesn't pick up any blocks. If John Brown picks up his cover man Nelson, I'm sure Jackson can outrun the defensive end to the edge and possibly finish this play with a larger gain. On 3rd and 5, the Ravens run a 2 wide receiver set and execute a very nice delayed rub concept on the safety to get John Brown open on the opposite side of the field. Taking a look at the All-22, Crabtree at the bottom of your screen runs a deep in route right at the safety Daniel Sorensen. Crabtree running right at Sorensen causes him to shift his hips to avoid Crabtree and loses the inside edge on Brown who beats his man for an easy 14 yard touchdown. Spencer Ware starts the next drive with two good cuts to avoid a tackle for loss and gains a hard fought 6 yards. On 2nd and 4, they give it to Ware on the draw, but inside linebacker Patrick Onwasor makes a nice tackle to stop him short of the first, bringing up 3rd and 1. The Chiefs run directly at number 97, Michael Pierce, and with a 4-yard gain, bring themselves to a new set of downs. On 1st and 10, the Chiefs dump the ball to Damian Williams, who picks up 14 yards after a nice catch and run. Unfortunately for the Chiefs, not having enough men on the line of scrimmage moves them back to the 34-yard line for 1st and 15. On this play, the Ravens bring a delayed seven-man rush, but Mahomes is able to avoid the pressure and get the ball to Kelsey for six. Without analysis, it looks like Mahomes has an easy read to Kelsey and just gets rid of the ball quickly. But when we take a look at his body position right as he's about to throw, we see something very few quarterbacks in this league can do successfully. When Patrick Mahomes ultimately begins this throw, his hips are rotating to the sidelines as if he wants to take off and run. He, however, with his front foot completely behind him, begins this throw to Kelsey. At the point of his release, he has his front leg kicked out to the side and his arm completely raised, nearly vertical, to avoid a strip sack and complete this throw. Later in this video, I will point out how Mahomes' ability to throw from any arm slot allows him to be successful with defenders raining down on him. Mahomes displays pressure recognition, superb body control, and great arm strength to make this throw accurately. On 2nd and 9, Tyreek Hill with a quick jab step to the inside runs an out route and gains 6. On 3rd and 3, the Chiefs run a quick bubble route to Spencer Ware who was met 1 yard behind the line of scrimmage by CJ Mosley, tackling him for a loss and bringing up 4th down. After what could have been a debilitating false start, Patrick Mahomes on 4th and 9 places ultimate faith in Tyreek Hill and just says to the Ravens defense, I'm going to win this game and there's nothing you can do to stop me. Hill catches the ball in the middle of 4 defenders and finally takes it 48 yards. When Mahomes is rolling out, Hill is running the complete opposite direction of him and only moments after Hill turns up the field, Mahomes sees a spot on the 28 yard line only he can reach and lets it fly. Hill then beats everyone else to the ball and with one small inside step has the fast track to the sidelines and up the field. Following this, the Chiefs have 12 yards to go and 1 minute 17 seconds to do it. A high pass dropped by Hill brings up 2nd and 10, where Mahomes hits Conley for a quick 5 yards due to the Ravens playing a soft middle zone. On 3rd and 5, Ware takes the ball to the left side C gap and is met when defensive tackle Michael Pierce sheds his block and pulls him to the ground for a gain of 1. 
With the game again riding on one play, the Chiefs line up with a three wide receiver set on the right side and have all three of them crash down, taking their men with them and leaving Damian Williams wide open to sneak through the trenches for an unchallenged screen pass. On this play, safety Eric Weddle comes free around the right tackle. To go back to an old point, this is where Mahomes' arm angle comes into play. On this throw, with a man in his face, he throws this ball from a three-quarter arm slot. I have no doubt that if he needed to throw this ball completely sidearm to get this ball to his man, he would have no problem executing. This play, while designed well to get Williams open, is executed by Mahomes not crumbling in the face of pressure and delivering a throw that is catchable while on the run. The Chiefs score the extra point and the Ravens have one more opportunity with 53 seconds to go down and score. However, with 44 seconds, the Ravens' drive was cut short when linebacker Justin Houston stripped Sack Jackson and recovered the fumble. This happened because the left tackle decided to take the edge rusher, unaware the right guard was already occupied, giving Houston a free lane to the quarterback and all but sealing the deal for the Chiefs. On first and second down, the Chiefs ran the ball up the middle and let the clock run down to three seconds. The Chiefs' Harrison Butker would then come onto the field to attempt the 43-yard field goal to win the game, only to miss five feet to the right and send us to overtime. Mahomes on this overtime drive went 6 for 8 for 68 yards, but a fumble on first and 10 inside the red zone set them back and only allowed them to get a field goal attempt. Butker would come onto the field to attempt a 36-yard field goal, and after putting it through the uprights, the Ravens would have an opportunity to strike back. After a quick run, Lamar Jackson would roll out to the right side of the field, take a shot deep, overthrowing his wide receiver and nearly intercepted. This would bring up third and seven, where Lamar Jackson would drop back, roll out, and sling a beautiful pass to the 40-yard line, which would give them a new set of downs. After three straight runs, two holding calls, and a hit that would remove Lamar Jackson from the game, RG3 came in and was nearly intercepted. On the game's final play, Robert Griffin would throw a ball to Willie Sneed that hit him in the hands, but he was unable to make the reception. Griffin was looking for a pass interference call, but the Chiefs were celebrating. The Chiefs had made a comeback, won in overtime, and taken their lead in the AFC West to 11-2. Thank you everyone for watching. My name is Maximus. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Final Five, and I'll see you next week.